What is the one thing that you can do to step up your Kamado grilling game? Stay tuned, I'll show you. What's up barbecue fans? Welcome back to Patio. My name is Jake, you're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're talking about the number one thing that you need to understand in order to make high quality food on your Komodo Kamado or any Kamado grill for that matter. Now, when people are new to smoking food and they hear the word smoke, much like I did, they think more smoke, more better. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way at all. In fact, if you know someone who doesn't like smoked food, there's a high probability they just had food cooked by an inexperienced smoker who filled it with dirty smoke and thought that they were doing themselves a favor. Meanwhile, they were only ruining their meal. And you know, if you don't know, you don't know. I spent years not understanding that concept. And to me, the food was fine. I, I didn't mind out it was really smoky. But as I learned more and more, I realized that, hey, there's a better way to do it. And clean smoke is how you get there. And to give you a shot here, I actually have my workhorse going today and we're just getting it fired up. But the black background gives us a great visual. You should be able to see with that, that that has a blue tint. I'm not sure how well it's gonna come across on camera, but this is what we call clean smoke. It should be minimal and it should be a blue tinge. When you're looking at your vent on your Kamado grill, you're gonna see the odd whiff of white smoke. But from that point on, you should really only be seeing blue smoke or no smoke at all. This is a case where you use your nose, not your eyes. The key to great tasting food is to have a very clean burning fire. You want that wood burning clean. And you know, if you, if you think about it, if you ever sit around the fire or if you've ever been around a Kamado grill and that wood is not burning cleanly yet, if you look into that smoke, it's gonna burn your eyes, right? That is part of the alcohol and the, and the burning process that's coming through, it's gonna burn your eyes. If it's burning your eyes, it probably doesn't taste good, right? So what you need to understand is that this is an inefficient fire burning in here. There's not a lot of air. They work great because of their design. They hold heat, they fire it down at the meat, and they've got some cooking properties that you can't find another cooker. But the one thing you have to understand is that this is a very inefficient fire. So you have to do your best to start a nice clean burning fire so that that wood there always burn clean and gives you the blue smoke you want. So what we're gonna do now is I've purposely left my basket splitter out and I'm gonna show you how we build a fire and we're gonna fire it up and I'm gonna show you what the smokes look like. Before we do that, you're gonna notice in here, this is nice, white and clean. Now, if you look online, you're gonna see videos on Komodo Komodo and Big Green Eggs where they've taken it to a high temperature and they've basically cleaned it to almost new. I actually made a whole video on that. This is the end result on that, but do not do that, all right? I'm not gonna be posting that video. I ended up, I talked to Dennis about uh, a couple other things that came up and what they've learned is they do not recommend doing that on a Komodo Komodo. Here's why. This material in here is refractory cement. What does cement do? Cement naturally absorbs some moisture. So what they would like you to do is they want you to leave a buildup of that oil and fat on there and it helps seal it to keep it nice and dry. If you've ever had one of these things and you haven't covered it properly or you haven't sealed your grout properly, what can happen is this lid will get heavy. And yes, there's a spring in here to help open it, but it'll get to a point where that spring is working too hard because the lid is, has absorbed too much moisture. Now that really only happens if you don't cover it and you don't seal your grout properly. Uh, but if that ever happens to you, all you need to do is just burn it at 450, 500 for a few hours and all that moisture will evaporate out of here. But what we wanna do is on the inside, we wanna keep that oil built up in there, but you don't want it to where there's a, a shiny surface. Right? The shininess comes from the, the sugars and whatnot in the sauces that you're using. 
Then it's time to do a little bit of a, a cleanup on the inside. But again, do not take it to this stage if you own a Komodo Komodo. On the other Komodo Joe and egg, it's perfectly okay. It's a completely different material. But for the, for the Komodo Komodo, you just don't want to do that. So ignore the white. <laughs> uh, so a side tip, start with some good lump. I remember when my dad first got a Komodo style grill, he went down to, I don't know, it was Canadian Tire or something in Canada, much like at Pep Boys here. Uh, but you know, it's an automotive place that happens to sell a whole bunch of other things, right? And uh, bought some lump and couldn't hold the temperature. And I was like, you know, what kind of lump are you using? And he named off some brand I never heard of. I was like, well, that's your problem. You know, lump has different densities and the more dense it is, the better it burns. You wanna start with a good quality lump um, I tend to use a lot of Fogo. Komodo Komodo's got their own coconut that is very, very good. It has been shipping for a little while with everything going on in the world today, uh, but it will be coming back. And uh, Komodo Joe makes big block. It's good. So those are kind of the three that I always use, but it's important just to use a good quality lump. So let's bring in here, let's fill this up. First, we're gonna talk about wood. This is cherry, okay? These are big, dense pieces. Now I'm gonna build a relatively small fire. We're only gonna use a quarter of the basket today. Two pieces is enough. You don't want more than five or 10% wood with your lump. It does not take a lot of wood to get that smoke flavor in your meat. So don't go crazy with the wood. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these right at the bottom. Why are we putting them on the bottom? The goal here is that when our lump is burning, that wood's gonna burn, but what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna burn, the smoke's gonna come through the lump and it's gonna twice double burn, and it actually cleans up that smoke a little bit more so you get an even cleaner tasting flavor. So as you can see, we've got two pieces of wood. Now normally when I set this up, I have my basket splitter in here. That seals off one side, but I wanted to make sure you could see everything. And a lot of times if I'm just doing an, a six or eight hour smoke, I might only use a quarter of the basket. But just so you can see everything, we're gonna set it up. So we're gonna put our smoke, we're, sorry, we're gonna put our wood, which is eventually gonna smoke on the bottom. Once you got all your lump put in there, you're gonna put it, surrounding all the wood. Again, it's a little easier when you've got the basket splitter in there. And then we're gonna get this lit. Now, one of the advantages to the grill blazing gun is that it puts the fire really low and helps our wood start to burn a little quicker. So with this guy, we only need about a minute. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our vents a little bit here. And down here, we're gonna go a quarter and you can open up this little one. Don't need to go a lot. The grill blazing gun gets a lot of lumps started at the same time. So it's not necessary to really open it up and let it go crazy. Right now we're open two turns here up top. And you can see right now, this is a white smoke. This is the kind of smoke that you don't want. This is gonna take a little while to clean up. The great thing about having the wood at the bottom of the lump is that as everything comes up to temperature, your wood comes up to temperature and it's just gonna burn that much cleaner. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wait till we get into our temperature. You might notice I don't have my, uh, my uh, thermometer here. I, I broke it <laughs> when I took it out. Uh, so I have another one coming. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a, a great level thermometer when I'm ready to cook and that'll allow me to dial it in. But typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this up to temperature, then we're gonna wait for a little while and we're gonna wait until our smoke clears up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this burn for a good 15 or 20 minutes, get my temperature locked in the way that I wanna get it locked in and then I'll bring it back and we'll look at the smoke and we'll wrap up. It's been 15 minutes, the rain has finally stopped, the sun showed its face for half a second, but more importantly, in my hands I'm holding a Loof Lighter X. For those of you not aware, this guy is the cordless version of the Loof Lighter. I bought this and did an unboxing 
on my channel last summer with it. Works great. I bought it because I really wanted to speed up my lighting of my Komodo Komodo during the week and I really didn't want to deal with propane. I ended up breaking down and buying a, gr a grill blaze gun anyhow. It actually lights quicker than this. Uh, so I don't use this anymore. So now I have a $300 item that's sitting here collecting dust. Again, I have a second battery. What I'm going to do, anyone who buys merch in the next month, I'm going to randomly pick someone and I'm going to ship this off to you. I'll send you an email and let you know and just say thanks for helping support the channel. If we look closer here, we're at 274. My target temperature is 275 today, so we're in good shape here. Thermopen, Thermoworks, definitely the way to go. The Smoke X is great because I can have four different probes, especially in a Kamado grill. It's nice to have the pit level temperature as well as your meat temps. Links for that below. But as you can see, there's little to no smoke at all coming out of the dome of this. Now, as your lump kind of falls and moves around, wood will burn at different times and a new edge will be caught. And you'll see, you know, little puffs of smoke here, but the majority of it is not going to be white. It's going to be a really thin blue smoke. That's the smoke you're going for. That is the smoke that's going to give you the most amazing flavor on your food. And that's what we're looking for. Even if you've got someone in your household who has sworn off smoked food, get them to try it again when it's done with clean smoke. I think they might be surprised at how good it can taste when it's done properly. That wraps up my most important tip when it comes to using a Kamado style grill. If you're looking for more tips, here's a video on the 12 mistakes the Kamado grill owners make. I think there's probably a couple in there that you're making. Thanks as always for watching. If you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm doing new videos every Monday. I'll see you soon.